Good evening and welcome to Talk of the Neighborhoods. I'm Joe Heisler, your host, coming to you from the BNN Live Studios, Eggleston Square, Jamaica Plain. We're tonight on the Boston Neighborhood Network. Uh, we continue our election 2013 coverage with more post-preliminary analysis and some very special guests tonight. The first and third place finishers in the mayoral primary on September 24th. I'm talking, of course, about Representative Marty Walsh, who the latest polls show him an underdog yet again. And then on the second half, Charlotte Golar Ritchie, who many people thought would be in the final, but came up just short. Tonight, we'll find out their plans in the months, I should say the weeks ahead, as we look forward to the November 5th final election. All that and more tonight on Talk of the Neighborhood. I'm Joe Heisler, your host. Tonight, we continue our coverage of election 2013 in this first half with a very special guest. Uh, he was the winner in the preliminary election for mayor, uh, coming in first, uh, just barely, but enough so that he and, of course, the other uh, candidate, John Connolly, are in the final. And tonight, uh, nice enough to come by to join us here on the set of Talk of the Neighborhoods. I'm talking about none other than Representative Marty Walsh. And Marty, nice to have you, you here. Thank you, Joe. Thank you to have you. Nice to be here. Thank uh, you for coming in. 1,400 votes. 1,400 votes. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't quite as yeah, sliver, but, it's, but it's close enough. Well, and, and I want to ask you about it. It had to be gratifying, uh, considering kind of where you started, uh, uh, representing only a part of the city, uh -huh. to, to have that kind of showing. Uh, uh, did you want to pinch yourself a little bit yeah, the it, next morning? It, it was and exciting. I mean, uh, first time running citywide. I've never run citywide before, and, and having a, a great election night and, and you know, coming in first was, was spectacular. But, you know, there was great people in the race as well, and, and I just want to acknowledge them. Uh, they, and I acknowledge them the night of the, my, my party. Um, you know, they really raised the, the level of conversation in here. Uh, their supporters uh, worked extremely hard all over the city. I've seen them all over. And, you know, it's kind of, it, it's, it's, in a way, it's lonely out in the trail right now because <laughs> uh, I don't see them. And, you know, we could actually answer each other's, finish each other's <laughs> opening statement. Uh, but, you know, they, they ran a great race, and the city is, is fortunate to have so many great candidates that ran for mayor, and, and I was blessed to, to go on to the final, and now, you know, with a little more than four weeks left, I'm, I'm excited about this and, you know, working hard. Well, of course, it's it's nice to be the front runner. Of course, the flip side of that is... Uh, you're the front uh, runner. <laughs> you're the front runner, and, uh, you know, in a little bit of a sense, uh, uh, don't you now have a target on your back? Uh, you know, I, I don't view the front runner the day after that Wednesday, actually that night, it's zero zero again. And it's about getting out there and, and explaining who you are and the differences between the two campaigns and the differences between the two candidates. And I've done that the whole, the whole campaign, and I've been doing that now for the last two weeks, talking about the issues that are concerning to me around economic development, around schools, around crime, uh, around you know, all the other different issues we've spoken about. Uh, and that's what we've been talking about. I've been talking about in my campaign. And, you know, the neighborhoods are very different in Boston. And as you go into those neighborhoods, you, you need to make sure that, that you understand the, the challenges in those different neighborhoods. Uh, last night I was over in uh, Dudley. Uh, there was a shooting, another shooting in Boston of a young man, 31 years old, with a two-year-old son and a girlfriend. And, uh, you know, I, I was over with the vigil they had. And, you know, we need to do more. We need to, we need to finally address this issue of, of the gun violence and this violence. It was a woman, uh, Mrs. Mendez. Everyone knows Mrs. Yeah. Mendez. She's lost Sarah, yeah. two sons to the street. Been on the show. And now she's lost, this is her third nephew. Yeah. You know, so we have to address these issues, and we need to stop talking. I went to the house last night, and, and when I was there, you know, it, it's just the devastation, the heartbreak, and the young people ha standing out front. We need to work with them so, so that, the, you know, they, they stop their revenge. We have to get to the point where we stop revenge and understand what the value of life is. Well, and, and talking about that, of course, uh, you know, it has been very civil through the preliminary, uh, as you mentioned, your colleagues, and I, and I think everybody kind of kept it positive. Uh, uh, are you afraid? Isn't that the, kind of the nature of the beast, though, now as we enter the final for it to get a little... Uh, chippier, or are you afraid this might get uh, nasty? Or are you no? I'm you just think, you think it can all stay above board? It, it will stay above board. I mean, I'm focused on the issues, and, and I think all I'm talking about out there when I'm when I'm out campaigning and meeting people and shaking hands is talking about opportunities. You know, how do we deal with the question of poverty? 
And that's a big question, you know, because we're talking about schools, it goes back to poverty. Mm -hmm. We're talking about crime, it goes back to poverty. Economic development, it goes back to poverty. And we need to work in a lot of neighborhoods in our city, you know. We, we truly are, I don't want to say we're a city of have, haves and have-nots, but some neighborhoods are doing far better than others. And we have mm -hmm. to identify that and address that, those problems out there. And well, and that raises that. a good point. Now, of course, you, you mentioned and you, you, you haven't run citywide before. You were a state rep in the... Uh, the Thirteen Suffolk, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, 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 but, so for those viewers out there who don't really know Marty Walsh, yeah. and I know you as a, you know honest, hard-working guy, yeah. and I, uh, I appreciate that, and I think a lot of people do. Uh, how do you, help us uh, differentiate the difference between you and John Connolly. And I'm not asking you to be negative, because I know you're not a negative yeah. person, but help us to kind of separate the two of you. What are you offering that you think he isn't? I mean, my life experiences. You know, I, I grew up in Dorchester. Uh, I live in Dorchester now. Uh, I got elected to the House of Representatives in 1997. Uh, you know, m before I got elected to the House of Representatives, I worked in the fields of construction. I got my hands dirty, like my father, uh, and I followed my father into the trades, uh, which to me gave me a life experience is no compared to nothing else. Uh, I wasn't a traditional college student. I went to BC Night Evening College. I got my degree in 2005. It should be 2009. A lot of families are struggling out there trying to make ends meet and, and go to college if they can when they when they can. Uh, I had a problem a pe period of my life where I overcame addiction, alcoholism, and you know all of those different things that happened when I was younger have, have shaped me to who I am today. Uh, being a, a member of the House of Representatives, you know I've worked on putting budgets together. I've sat down and and understood what a good economy is and what a bad economy is, and and how do we make difficult choices in those bad times. And when there's good times, Ron, how do we not overspend? And those, those are things that I've done as, a, as, a, as an elected official. When it comes around education, you know, I'm a supporter of, of I'm on the board member, for, founding board member of Neighborhood House Charter School um, in Dorchester. And I supported that school because it was an option for parents to send their kids to a public school. Too many families were leaving the city of Boston because they couldn't get into the school or a school they wanted. And they were leaving the city. And being on the board at the charter school allowed many, hundreds of families to stay in the city of Boston. Uh, when it came to dealing with our underperforming schools here in the city mm -hmm. of Boston, I didn't just talk about it. I actually, I actually worked with the legislative leadership. I worked with the mayor's office. And I worked to make changes. We called it education reform in 2010. When we made those changes, we see the benefits mm -hmm. of those changes now in the contract. Because we have turnaround schools in Boston, Orchard Gardens, one from a school that was close to being taken over by the state to a school that's mm -hmm. level one now. Those are, the, and I was part of creating legislation to fix that. Now your opponent, uh, well, I, I don't know if he, uh, this is a conscious decision, but uh, certainly he's campaigning, uh, you know, to be, uh, for, in other words, uh, the education mayor. Mm -hmm. that he, he owns that issue. Uh, does he own that issue? No, and does that hurt you because no, of that? He, he certainly and, and and you don't have children of your own in the public schools no. here because he. Uh, and I'm paying, playing old devil's advocate yep. here, but he you know uh, trots out his uh, his daughter that's uh, just started at the the Trotter School. Yep. Uh, but uh, which, by the way, is a turnaround school, level one school now. And the legislation that I supported and worked on in 2010 was able to make that happen. Uh, but uh, does he own that issue? No, uh, he, I, and how, how will that cut across uh, in this race? I mean, I have a record of, of accomplishment, what I've done. I've worked uh, to make sure that we've gotten more money into the school system here in the city of Boston, increase our, our funding for education. I've worked on issues around special education. I've worked on a whole host of different issues as a legislator. Uh, in what I plan on doing in the future is I have a plan that fully funds pre-K kindergarten in the city of Boston. Right now, we're taking care of about half of the kids that, that are eligible. We have a plan to, to speed it up so we can get all of the kids in pre-K the ability to get into uh, school early, which, which shows that they get in school early. Also, we're talk we have a plan. It's going to take a lot of money. It's going to take a lot of money, but we have some great ideas on how to do it. And, and part, of the, part of it's money and part of it's space, you know, about creating new schools. And we, you know, we're not at the point where we can build a whole host of new schools in Boston, but we can use our libraries. We can use our municipal buildings. There's no reason why we don't look at those places as opportunities mm -hmm. for classrooms. And I think that that's important. Also, our high schools. We have a plan to, to, to completely reform our high schools in Boston. Outside of the exam schools, many families have no faith in the high school system here in Boston. We need to be able to push that to make sure they have faith. But, you know, my campaign isn't just built around one issue. 
I mean, and, and that's that's the difference here. Well, and and of course, you know, the the, the pundits, uh, and of course, the uh, uh, pundits are pundits, and I, I am my, myself uh, many times as well. So uh, I'll lump myself in there. Uh, one, I kind of paint this race as uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, working class uh, up from the bootstraps, uh, union guy, uh, versus. Uh, uh, you know, kind of a lace curtain Irish uh, West Roxbury uh, Harvard educated uh, uh, intellectual type. Well, I don't know and, if I, and, I don't. And, and, you're and, saying it. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm 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 you know uh, paraphrasing there, but uh, uh, you know I'm guessing that you know that doesn't do you justice, doesn't do him justice. But you your roots are in, and in fact you you headed the uh, building trades uh, union, and you still uh, mm -hmm. had a local, if I recall. Uh, and uh, I mean, you're being kind of tarred, and I, I really want to give you a chance yeah. to, uh, to answer this because I, I, I keep seeing it, it keeps being yeah. tried out there that uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, Marty Walsh gets elected, he will be a stooge of the unions, yeah. and uh, pardon my uh, expression there, but uh, 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 how do you get it? I, and, and convince our viewers that uh, uh, how you can deal with uh, uh, unions, because that is a big part of it. It's a big part of the money, as we found found out yeah. from the police uh, arbitration yeah. award. Uh, you know, uh, this it involves an enormous amount yeah. of money. No, I mean, I think I think my story my story goes back to my parents. My parents came to this country uh, separately uh, in the early '50s. They met at a dance hall in Dudley Street. Uh, they're immigrants, and, and they met. They got married. They had two boys. And, and I grew up. My father went to work construction as a laborer, and, and he worked extremely hard his whole career. My my mother. Um, was stay at home mom for a while and then she went back to work. She worked when she first came and they came here to send money back home. Uh, and I'm proud of the upbringing I've had. And as far as being a, a champion of working families, I'm fine. I wear that label every day. I mean, because I support wanting to make sure we move our economy forward and making sure the families have the opportunity to send their kids to school and be able to buy a home. I mean, I'll wear that. That's fine with me. You know, my campaign, we've been talking about those issues. That's what's important to the city of Boston here. You know, and I think, you know, John and myself ha did have had different upbringings, um, but my upbringing, I, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. I mean, I'm the American dream, son of immigrants, be able to, you know, put myself through college at night, uh, get elected to the legislature, be able to run f to become the mayor of the city of Boston to represent all those people. You know, a lot of folks in the city are immigrants. You know, m granted, the, the challenges my parents had and, and some of the immigrants we have today, whether it's the Latino community or other communities, uh, it's not a language barrier, but there's still challenges when people leave their home to come to the city. We need to make sure the city is welcoming to all people, making sure that everyone feels the opportunity. So if you have young, two young African-American males walking down the street that they don't feel that they're being discriminated against or they're being profiled, that's the city that I want to work on and to make sure that doesn't happen in the city. And there's a lot of challenges ahead of us. You know? and, and, and how do you get away from that, that, uh, uh, that union label? And, and I'm, not I mean, saying, I'm not saying it's a fair criticism. Well, I'm just saying my you know, it keeps being trotted out. My that, record. That, I mean, you, ha you have, I mean, the, it seems like some of the press isn't letting it go, but it's my record. I mean, my record of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly have plenty of people on my campaign that are supporting me that, that aren't part of a union. Uh, and, and they're supporting me because they believe in who I am and they believe in what my campaign is all about. I have a record on Beacon Hill of getting to compromise. And I think that that's important as a mayor to be able to sit down and negotiate. I think the strength I have is coming out of that world, mm -hmm. being able to sit across the table with the police, with the fire department, with the teachers, with the AFSCME mm -hmm. workers, with all the different... But, but how do you say no to a, a Tommy Nee? He's a tough guy and, uh, you know... Uh, uh, comports himself. Hey, you know, Eddie Kelly, well, he's now well, with the Masters. I don't know if you read the paper the other day, but I kind of said no to them the yeah. other day. <laughs> and, they well, they were, they, yeah. and they weren't happy about yeah, it. Yeah. You know, but, but it goes back to, it goes back to, um, you know, this, you can't, you know, what I want, what I plan on doing is putting the cards on the table, asking uh, these different leaders and the, and the members and the workers of the city to be a partner with me. You can't give something that the city doesn't have. We have a lot of plans. We've been talking about a lot of ideas for the city. And when it comes to negotiation, um, city workers should be treated fairly, and they should be paid fairly, and they should be able to have benefits and be able to raise their family. Uh, but we also have to be cognizant of the fact that we can't give the city, we can't give the store away. And, you know, that's where my experience on Beacon Hill comes into play, where I've sat down. When I first got elected, we were able to do 44 tax cuts across the board. It was great. Money was flowing in. I was able to renovate station, uh, red line stations in Dorchester. I was able to put money for beaches. We were able to do so much stuff. 
And then September 11th, 2001 happened, and our economy went down. And we've never fully recovered from that down, downward economy. And what we've had to do then is make difficult decisions on, on where, we, where, we, where we plug the holes, if we will. And I also work with the unions on a state level. They took zeros many of those years. You know, workers, and, and they took furloughs. And I was able to be part of, at the table for a compromise uh, when the Transportation Reform Act happened in Massachusetts, where we took the Mass Turnpike Authority, uh, for me, you know, everyone knows what the, math, the, 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 the Mass Pike is, and we took the Mass Dot, Mass Highway, and we merged them together. You had collective bargaining units representing people that were doing the same job at a, at a big pace. I was able to sit down with Jeffrey Mullen, sit down with the leadership of the union, and come up with an understanding on how are we going to merge these two units together, units that get paid differently but do similar work. And, and, and because I was able, of your credibility? I was able to do that. Uh, and... Uh, do you see that work? And, and you know, you mentioned, you know, of course, the uh, arbitration board for the uh, police. Uh, no one's happy. No, uh, and, and I and, simply asked, I asked the city to go back to the table to sit down and, and discuss it to see if we could come up with a better compromise. And, let and, me, and you said Mayor Menino, you, you weren't sure he handled it. Well, right five, four and a half years. Without, oh, what have you handled four, it differently? Four and a half years out of contract. And again, I wasn't at the table to understand w where the breakdown mm -hmm. was. But I don't want to get, in, get into a he said, she said when I'm negotiating a contract. You know, when I get to the table, I want to be able to say, how can we move this contract forward so that the taxpayers of Boston are protected as well as the workers of Boston are compensated? And that's what we can do. You, we have many times in my life I have worked on deals that started out um, very far apart. And, and by the end of the day, there's a compromise, there's an understanding, and everybody's happy. We have to get to yes. We have to get the yes. We can't have uh, no and yes at the table. So it's not it, going to work. It's a question of being incredible. All right, we've got a few minutes left, and I, I, I want to get through uh, a couple of other things. Now, of course, you, you've gotten a lot of uh, labor support, yes. including uh, you know donations and uh, outside groups uh, that have supported you as well that uh, are are affiliated or certainly have a, a, a labor union background. Uh, the Globe hammered you the other day in in a. Uh, uh, editorial saying, uh, you know, it's not too late uh, to pledge, to take the pledge, no. to refuse outsides. Uh, uh, the, the same paper, by the way, that said three months ago that John Conley should take the money. <laughs> you know, so, so the very same editorial board yep. said the same thing three months ago, a different thing, I should say. You know, when this was discussed early in the campaign, um, you know, um, John, in this case, came out and said that, uh, you know, he wasn't going to accept the money after he accepted the money. Right. And then... You know, I'm not going to go through the minutia, but he called it a gimmick, and it is a gimmick. You know, it's a gimmick here, and, and you know, the, the pledge that was put in front of me, well, actually, I'd never seen a pledge, but what I understand, it was, it was kind of a pledge. It was that we can't take outside money for, um, for certain things, but we want outside money for, for canvassers. You know, if, if there's a true pledge on the table, we don't cut the pledge up. Are you afraid that though that's going to somehow color the uh, the race or uh, perception? No, uh, no, because in the uh, in the know, primary, it's a, it's a the, calculated risk. In, no, but in the primary, both campaigns, yeah, both campaigns, actually more than two, but both campaigns benefited uh, from um, this type of support, yeah. if you will. Um, so it wasn't like uh, the other camp didn't take money. There was money there in the other camp. So, you know, I think that it's a distraction trying to get bogus off the issues. Issue. It's a bogus issue when people trying to get off the issues. I mean, let's talk about the issues. That w Why I was successful mm -hmm. on Election Day on the 24th of September was because of working and campaigning well, in every neighborhood. And that brings and, up an interesting point. I, I, of course, uh, uh, between you and John Connolly, you got roughly 35% of approximately 30% of the registered yeah. voters. Uh, uh, how do you get to 50% given that? Uh, uh, you know, uh, the biggest pool of voters, I think it's fair to say, is probably the community of color, as yeah. there is no remaining yeah. candidate there. Not that uh, uh, people vote strictly on that, but certainly uh, uh, that's uh, an area of the city that, you know, you're from Savin yeah. Hill and John's from West Roxbury. How do you get there? How do you reach out? Have you reached out to the, uh, your colleagues that were in the race with you? Yeah, I've they, spoken uh, to my colleagues, and, and I think that, you know, my colleagues are still working through uh, the fact that they just spent the last four and a half months of their life campaigning for mm -hmm. mayor. So, you know, you have to give them the ability to come to a, an understanding themselves. Uh, I've reached out to Anthony Petroselli, uh, the senator from East Boston, mm -hmm. where I came in second place in East Boston, and, and the senator came on board the other day in my campaign. I'm honored to have him. Uh, that makes a difference in reaching out to some of the other folks in East Boston. 
uh, Mara Hennigan, who ran for mayor uh, several years ago and is a very popular clerk of the courts. Um, she came on board last week as well. So I'm working with my colleagues. I have Dan Cullinane, a brand new state representative from Dorchester, uh, came on board. Angelo Scasher in Hyde Park came on board. So we're working that way. But ultimately, that endorsements aren't going to win this race for you. What's going to win this race for me is by going out and shaking hands and talking to people mm -hmm. and letting them know where I stand on the issues and how I'm going to help their life in Boston. And how about the community of color? Uh, how do you uh, how do you get that vote? How do you win over that vote? And it's like every other. Well, it's uh, every, don't get me wrong. They'll, no, they'll, people split and they go different ways. But uh, it's what about, are you offering to kind of you know that that really kind of addresses their well, need? I talk know? about my record and, and what I've done as a as a lawmaker is, is created a program in, in the communities of color called Building Pathways. Which, gave, which gives people of color and women the opportunity to get direct entry into the building trades. And that program has been successful. Uh, I've been able to work up on Beacon Hill with my colleagues on a whole host of different issues. One of the challenges that folks have is the Cory, the Cory. And I've worked on Cory reform legislation to be able to make it a, a, the ability easier for folks mm -hmm. to be able to get a job. You know, the Cory keeps a lot of people out. We have misdemeanors in this state. It's a five year look back as far as Cory goes. You know, we have to be able to work with the legislature. We also, it comes, it, but it comes back to educational opportunities and it comes back to making sure that people have a chance to move ahead. Sure. One, one quick example, sure. Madison Park, uh, high school. That school should be open 18 hours a day. We should be teaching young people in the day and we should be teaching adults at night. We should be focusing on how do we get people the ability to be able to get a job and we should be attracting new opportunities to neighborhoods. So you're saying if, if you get, if you do a good job of explaining your record, people will come to you? And meeting people. Uh, and, and endorsements help, too. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. I, certainly, yeah. I, I would love endorsements. Well, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, John Barrow, Charlotte Gola, Ritchie, we've not heard anything from them. Maybe will we hear something? Are you courting them as well? We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Um, and, uh, I mean, do you see a path? I mean, this I is almost so close you can I touch see a path. it, isn't it? Uh, I, I see a path. I see a path to victory, and and we're gonna we're gonna we have the the understanding and how how to win. Uh, we had a path on the twenty fourth. Uh, we certainly have a path for November fifth, and and uh, we're gonna carry it out. And I'm gonna be out working hard in the different neighborhoods, and you know the communities of color is one big piece of it. Uh, High Park is one big piece of it. There's certain areas in the city. That, that are big pieces mm -hmm. to, to making sure that I become the next mayor of Boston and I'm working extremely hard there and making sure that we have the opportunity to uh, I have the opportunity to get to City Hall and be able to do some great things for the city of Boston, continue a lot of things that Tom Menino has done, uh, but also do some other things and make some changes that I think will benefit the city. Have, the, have the, you had to kind of tiptoe along a little bit uh, for fear of uh, upsetting the mayor here? No, uh, I, I, no. Yeah, you said something the other day and we've got just a, a few seconds left, but uh, you know, about how the labor uh, negotiations with the Boston police were handled. But do you have to be really careful? Uh, I mean, are, or uh, th this and do you also, uh, can you pick up pieces of his uh, well, machine? Absolutely. So I mean, well, this isn't a race against Tom Menino. Yeah. Mayor Menino's been the mayor for 20 years. He's done a spectacular job in the city of Boston. He's leaving it to, to either John or myself in very strong fiscal shape. Uh, we have, there's a lot of opportunity going on now with, with, development in the city of Boston. So we have a good start. And Tom Menino, we're not running, I'm not running against Tom Menino. I'm running for mayor of Boston. I have an opponent in this race and, and I am running for mayor of Boston. There's one other constituency we didn't touch just real quickly is the seniors in our city. You know, the seniors vote. Mm -hmm. Seniors get active and, and we have a plan as well for the seniors. And Mayor Menino, one area that he is beloved is with the seniors yeah. in the city. I mean, I hear it every single day. Any chance you can get his endorsement? I would love his endorsement, but <laughs> I don't have it yet. <laughs> Well, again, uh, Representative Marty Walsh uh, was the winner of the preliminary election, the top vote getter at uh, 18%, was it? I think uh, I'm not even sure. Roughly yeah, somewhere in 20 there. 20 plus uh, thousand votes. Uh, good enough to be one of the top two uh, uh, in the final. Of course, uh, four weeks from uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. and uh, we shall see. Uh, nice enough to come by tonight and, and join us. And Joe, thanks talk for having me. Kim, thanks so much. Thank again. you very much more on election 2013. All right, we're back with more of Talk to the Neighborhoods. I'm Joe Heisler, your host. And in this segment, still on the mayor's race, still on the prelim, uh, joining me a very special guest. Uh, I don't think anyone would call her an also rand, but she just finished out of the money in the preliminary election. Of course, uh, 
She is from Dorchester, uh, Charlotte Golar Ritchie, and she was nice enough to come by tonight and join us. Nice to have you back. Happy to be here, and Joe. Nice to always see you here. Have, always good to be well, here. Well, how how you feeling? I mean, what talk about a whirlwind right. campaign? Uh, you know, fast paced oh, and right, yeah. not a moment to like rest yeah. and you know just going twenty four seven. Um, I feel good. I feel good um, because. I, I think overall we did well. We did mm -hmm. not um, get the, one of those two spots, which was what the goal was. I wouldn't have entered the race if mm -hmm. I didn't think I could win, right? Um, but we finished strong. And um, that was despite a lot of um, hurdles we had to cross, right? Well, you, know, you started, uh, you were the last one into the race, I more was. or less. I and, was more or and less. This, and, uh, I didn't have with, that ready uh, war chest. Yeah, that's didn't, it. I right, didn't have that organization. And it had been a while since I had run for elective office and all of that. We knew that going in, though. So that was, you know, all was part of the um, equation and the calculation, figuring that, okay, there were some, um, certainly, like I said, hurdles we had to cross, but that we could do that and be mm -hmm. successful in the end. Um, didn't raise as much money as my competitors actually mm -hmm. was probably um, outspent three to one by the top mm -hmm. vote getters. Um, so I think we spent something like $21 per vote. Probably could have used a few more dollars there. Oh, but yeah. yeah, but still did quite well, since well coming uh, in third place in a 12 person race. Well, uh, and uh, of course, uh, you know, with all the buildup and, you know, uh, just the. Uh, uh, camaraderie and the spirit of your volunteers and you know a lot of people involved and uh, there's a kind of a crescendo to it uh, uh, after all said and done though you know when you fall short a little disappointed you had to be a little disappointed and, and right I mean I feel disappointed because there were so many people who worked so hard mm. Um, you know, we started out, um, you know, so it started off a little bit slow, but it was slow and steady. Mm -hmm. And then um, just bit by bit, we were just kind of gaining steam all the way. We started at, you know, kind of low digits. I think first poll came out, we were somewhere around 5%. Right, I remember. And then um, some weeks later, you know, took this big leap into double digits. And we were sort of neck and neck for in second place. And um, people were just so excited. We came back mm -hmm. after Labor Day just roaring re you know ready to go there. right yeah but we just just fell short it'd um, be hard not to be disappointed right um who do you blame i mean or is, Ooh, that, is, blame? is that is that no. uh, that's too strong a word maybe a little bit yeah no I'm, i don't i don't know that i have been doing that sort of the blame game yeah yeah no i think that the things that you look back you you do a little bit of you know you have to look back in fact yeah. i pulled my um team, the executive team together, uh, the folks who mm -hmm. managed our um, field offices, pulled them together for a debriefing session. Um, actually had a big volunteer uh, gathering last week, um, very yes. well attended. And so we d we've looked back to kind of just learn from um, the experience. What would we have done differently? Mm -hmm. um, how could we have improved on what we did? Um, how could we have, you know, what, if people had a choice, you know, what would that be? You know, things like, you know, wish Charlotte you had gotten in a little bit early, or if you had thought about running for mayor, could there have been some work we could have done early on? Laid the groundwork, so to speak. Yeah. I think so, Joe. You know, so some of that. Um, you know, always people are going to talk about raising money, but I think we had such a ter terrific grassroots operation that we made up for the difference in um, fundraising. Well, certainly your finish, uh, you know, very strong, and, uh, you know, the other part of it, there weren't a lot of polls, uh, you know, there was really only a couple, there might have been some internal polling going on, but, uh, you know, sometimes that helps to, in a strange sort of way, kind of narrow the field and, you know, kind of focus more attention. There didn't seem to many, be too many polls this time around. Right, not a whole bunch of them, um, but, you know, so in the, and I really did not know how I would be received yep. getting out into the race. It's hard Again, to know. It's been a while now. It, you ran for and won a state rep seat, but... Uh, right, that been was some few, years ago, yeah, right? Some yeah. years ago, so I wasn't really sure. So how did that of, feel, getting back well, on said, the trail? You know, because okay. it's kind Cause of Because it was like quiet. a generation of people who were born yeah. in, um, since the last time I had uh, mm -hmm. run for office. is almost like that. Um, I wasn't really sure what to expect, Joe. I remember um, early on in the campaign going into a, um, I guess it was like a, a veterans gathering mm -hmm. in sometime in May. 
And I walked in and I said, gosh, I don't think anybody here is going to know me. It was out in Hyde Park. And, of course, the district that I represented in the legislature was Dorchester and Roxbury. Right. So I walk in, don't know what kind of reception I'll right. get, and somebody comes up to me and says, oh, I know who you are. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is going to be a piece of cake. People know me out here in Hyde Park. I'm in good shape. He said, you're, you're Ayanna Presley. <laughs> oh, <Ouch>, right. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I do have a little work to yeah, do here. <laughs> I hear you. Right. No, I hear you. Of course, uh, you know, in the course of a campaign, uh, you know, always highs and lows. And, right. uh, uh, you know, part of it is, is kind of managing it, managing expectations. And uh, that's always part of it. Were you, were you kind of surprised at some of the criticism that came your way? I mean, I've known you so long and I know, you know, what you're capable of, but, uh, you know, it does take a while and then sometimes, uh, you know, people chime in and, and you know, it's a little bit, uh, uh, of right. course, uh, nature of the beast that you, you, you run into that. But, right. we, you know, uh, uh, you know, some newspaper columnists, uh, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Right. A little mean-spirited. Um, you know, I would say that, let's see, what's the teaching moment or something that you take from the, that piece? Um, if you're going to get out into the race it, and you're talking about laying the groundwork, maybe it would help to um, make sure you shore up those, you know, relationships, make sure that you have, you know, a, ch a chance to talk to people before you get in mm -hmm. or when you get in early on and, um, you know, to the extent that they can know you, um, um, you know, Joe, that can help, right? Um, well, and that's part of, uh, you know, getting to the race early enough so people really can know right, you. So I... Because right. uh, even if it turns out that they have a different uh, candidate, right? So they would prefer to see somebody mm -hmm. else lead the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's everybody. That's, you know, your prerogative to right. have a different yep, candidate. Yep. I, I just don't quite understand why we still can't be cordial, why we can't be respectful, right. why we can't recognize that we're all just trying to make a difference here. And rather than try to sort of cut somebody down. Well, and, uh, you know, and, and some of it was uh, not too kind. Uh, you know, some suggesting uh, uh, the campaign was dysfunctional or your message wasn't clear. And, of course, you know, anybody that knows anything about campaigns knows they do not work like clockwork. <laughs> it's like... Uh, Especially when you're, like, <laughs> trying to become mayor in five months. <laughs> um, right. No, I mean, I'm, I don't know that I can argue too strenuously mm -hmm. about the dysfunction. You know, I think, was it a well-oiled machine that I was running? No, I was running a campaign that we pulled together and- uh, uh, Different parts right. from uh, different uh, cars. I mean, it's, it's just, it's amazing that we did what we were able to do. Yeah. You know, it's not like I had a campaign manager waiting on the street corner saying, oh, Charlotte, here I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to kind of pull this thing together real fast. Um, you know, press and message and website, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, all of well, those things. Well, and of course, uh, you know, you're going out to events and talking and, right. uh, you know, you've, I'm, I'm sure you felt like uh, your message was coming across because you were saying what you thought. Well, I would say there uh, was but, a uh, challenge with the delivery of the message in the sense that there were 12 candidates. Right. So we were lined up sort of assembly A line. lot of voices. A lo yeah, and, and it was um, generally the way the... Um, uh, the sort of uh, debate process went is that we lined up and well, you'd have 60 seconds to give your opening comments and then I'd have 60 <laughs> and then it goes on down the line, come back to you quickly, what do you think about schools? And you got to say that in 60 seconds, you know. So, I mean, there's just a whole lot to say about any given topic, right? It's not, I mean, I don't know that we're going to be able to lead a city just through yes and no answers. Um, so, yeah, a lot of what Plus, I Plus, was there some kind of reluctance to, you know, uh, and, and this, I think, was probably true of all candidates, uh, uh, be, one, because of his popularity, but you, because of your, your long-time relationship, to, to say anything that might come across as criticism of the, of the mayor, of Mayor Menino. Well, well, was that a challenge to kind of... I think that, okay, so that's Because he, he is a little thin-skinned, <laughs> as, as we know, you know? <laughs> Good guy, but a little thin-skinned. You know, I think the, the strategy probably for all the candidates was to see if we could make our case and um, not throw too many bombs. And it wasn't not just in the direction of the mayor, but even at one, one, mm -hmm. uh, one another. Why? Because we knew that two would emerge in the final and that those two would be eager 
to secure the support of the remaining, you know, candidates there. So um, and the mayor, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Although he did say early on he wasn't going to wade into yeah. this um, unless somebody decided to tear down the city or something like that. Well, I know he was. Uh, you know, he's very fond of you and and, uh, yeah, and respectfully. I have him. And, yeah, we worked um, together for eight years. I, you know, I, I you know it was uh, almost like a little episode in the campaign, but I, I'm just wondering how much of an effect uh, your uh, the efforts of the, the unsolicited efforts of some of your supporters to, you know, try and narrow the field uh, uh, to kind of coalesce around uh, at least one or two candidates of color uh, in order to better the chances. Did that end up hurting you? Do you think? Um, and so, I know it was yeah. it wasn't sanctioned in any way. Is well, it kind right. of overeager? So I would say that, um, and you know, the rumor mill was churning. I guess that was at that point. That's sort of the height of. Um, interest in the campaign mm -hmm. at that point. Um, and so apparently, you know, and I wasn't at the meeting, mm -hmm. and you're right, I did not sanction the meeting, nor did I sanction any kind of discussion around trying to get um, supporters to coalesce around a single candidate. But that said, um, there were supporters of mine who apparently mm -hmm. were in the room, and supporters of other candidates. So it wasn't just, um, you know, that my candidates were there trying to marshal the troops right. to come behind my candidacy. There were other um, supporters there um, for their candidates, and there was a discussion. Um, I'm told that was about issues. That's where the that's where the conversation started around issues, and then it somehow gravitated towards this t topic around: um, is it possible for the community to, to ever come, you know, mm -hmm. to agree? You know, and and in hindsight, um, that's what people are talking about. Could right. would it have been possible if right. you really wanted to have right. a person of color in the final? Would it have been possible for people to come together? Um, I certainly acknowledge the fact that if you have candidates of color who are already in the race and I jump mm -hmm. in a week or two weeks after them, it would be quite presumptuous of me to say to them, okay, I'm here, you all, everybody, yeah, no, step you aside. Out, yeah. yeah, I wasn't yeah. going to do that. Yeah. So I said that everybody in the race has a right to be in the right race, and I have a right to be in the race, yep. and that's where we were. Yep. Uh, did that hurt you, though, do you think? Uh, um, the, I mean, you know, the, the fact, the, 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 the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, it's true, and, and I know you had plenty of votes regardless of race, ethnicity, but, right. you know, we'll, we'll certainly, uh, uh, the potential for you to be uh, the, the first woman and the first uh, African American elected uh, uh, mayor, uh, you know, had. There's a lot of people that uh, uh, were supportive of the idea. I think that's fair to say. And, and uh, uh, I just uh, wondering if you felt like that kind of like pulled away from you at that time. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure, uh, Joe. I, you know, I would say if if I had to pick one thing that I could change. It might be just a little bit more time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that with a little bit more time, I would have been able to withstand any shots I got from the media. I would have been able to um, deal with the little sort of um, kerfluffle right. <laughs> that um, um, kind of came about right. during the ca course of the campaign. Um, would have been able to deal with the fact that I was outmatched in spending three to one by the top competitors mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, yeah so just a, I think a little bit more time is what the campaign needed. Um, and there's nothing you could do. Right. You can't buy that. It, September 24th rolled along and there we yeah. were. And there it is. There's there no it is. turning That's back. Right. Of course, uh, uh, Reverend Rivers, uh, Eugene Rivers, one of your supporters, said, uh, you know, in an uh, op ed piece, said, uh, you know, the community of color has no one to blame but itself that uh, they kind of allowed themselves to be divided and conquered uh, once if, again. If, in fact, the goal was to have a candidate yeah. of color yeah. in, the, in the final. And maybe for some people it wasn't, you yeah. know? Maybe it was, we want to have the best candidate. Mm -hmm. And I, while I thought that I was um, clearly um, uniquely qualified and ready for the job, they may have thought it was somebody else. I mean, I would say, you know, this um, campaigning is an interesting process in terms of, you know, trying to get a job through a um, this campaign process, election process, right? <laughs> Quite interesting. I'm very uh, right. uncertain. Now right. what? Yeah, now uh, what? Do, okay. you, do you endorse? Uh, do you, uh, well, you know, under what conditions? Uh, right, have you yeah. thought about that? Uh, well, have I thought about yeah. it, right? I don't know that I could not think about it. The, the candidates won't let me, you know, they forget about it. They keep calling you, right? <laughs> they won't yes, forget about it. And my supporters have been asking, yeah. and, the, and the media too. I mean, what yeah. they're kind of looking. So. The um, what do you say? The bonus of coming in third, 
right? You don't get one if of the top spots. If there's any, right. the silver lining, right. right, is you don't get the top one of the top two spots. Um, you don't get to be in any more candidates' deb debates mm -hmm. <laughs> or go around um, to events, not asked to be in events and all that stuff. But you do get asked about, are you going to endorse? So I have um, already said, I'm on the record of saying, I want to um, make up my mind very quickly. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I just need to do that now, either to endorse one of the candidates or to decide you, you that I'll sit it You can do it here out. tonight if you want. <laughs> 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 no, but you, 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 you've got a, a, perhaps a, as good a view as anybody up close um, of, of uh, these two guys that, that ended up uh, in the race. Yes. Uh, Marty Walsh, of course, uh, came out on top, and right. John Connolly, and... Uh, right. Uh, and Marty, I mean, Abner, Marty are, 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 are they up to, are they up to it? Uh, you know, what, what I say, ready or not. Yeah. I mean, there were 12 candidates who yeah. were running for mayor. Yeah. Not one of us had been mayor before. So it was going to be a challenge for any one yeah. of us who got the yeah. job. Yeah. Okay, I was saying, well, you know, I'd run a city agency. I'd worked as a legislator. I had worked in a, you know, mm -hmm. national organization in Washington, D.C. and had those experiences. Other people have had all kinds of, you know, other uh, unique experiences, right, which may, in their mind, make them and their supporters believe that they are qualified, right? What, what, two, will, what will make you decide in the end who to endorse? Well, what, what I think will it's be going the to most come important down, factors? It's going to come down to a couple of things. It's going to come down to the issues that I care most about, and it's probably going to come down also to, to something, well, maybe I'll say three. Um, issues I care about, the kind of rapport I think I can have mm -hmm. with the candidate and then, you know, would be mayor. And then the third is going to be probably um, a realistic view about his path to victory. Mm -hmm. um, because I know that my, um, my team and my supporters are, you know, recovering from the fact that oh. we weren't able to pull out a win in this. Yep. And I don't know, you know, I want to be very careful about taking them down the garden path. Yep. So even though I might find a candidate who is appealing and, and maybe says all the right things and is with me on the issues, I have to look and say, can this candidate actually win this race? Yep. So I'm going to look at all three of those. Yep. I mean, issues... Like that, everyone, you want to pick a winner, too. Right, What's your timeline? What's your timeline? I mean, well, I'm, no. I, it's imminent. I'll yeah. say imminent. But I, it's not brazen. It's sort of saying, you know, kind of, I, can, I cannot support somebody unless right. I have a 100% guarantee this person's right. going to win because there's no such thing. Right. Right. But I just want to understand what the, the path, what path uh, to victory is. Is there a, a, a you know, a, a certain thing that you want to see from them, though, that will determine? So I would like to see for them um, a, an interest, a strong interest in embracing young people, um, particularly those who um, are out of school and out of work, and the young people mm -hmm. who you see sort of hanging out on the corner, you wonder, you know, who's looking out for them and that kind of thing. I would like um, for attention to be given to our young people. Um, and I think in starting, you know, well, clearly um, the, our um, elementary school age kids need attention, right? And even, but even before they come into school, and I've been involved working in a nonprofit that looks at um, pregnant and parenting right. um, teens and all of that. But I would say, let's take a look at young people 14 to 24, that segment, right. and say, we need to make sure they're working or they're in school, that they have a plan, um, and that's what I'd like I to see the we'll, next mayor. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Okay, we've got just a, sure. a, a, a few seconds left. Okay. Uh, would you uh, work, be willing to work in the next administration? Um, I don't want to rule it out, but that's not particular. That's not at the top of my list. And you know, so, what, what next list. for uh, uh, after this grueling experience, uh, so exciting what, experience? Yeah. Would you ever consider running again for office? Well, I would consider it. Um, certainly, I guess, I guess if I am, I'm going to make sure that I um, start up my first we'll start early. My, start early. <laughs> Talk to the press a little early, yeah. and um, and to make friends with the press if I can do it. Um, no, I think that I would definitely consider it. I don't know right now what office that might be, but I know that there is um, there's a community out there that was excited about my candidacy. Mm -hmm that has hopes and aspirations, they want somebody who's going to advocate for them and somebody who will want to govern for them. And I, want, and I, would, and I don't want to abandon them. Well, I hear you. You know, you've got a friend in this uh, media oh, you person. Know, you and know, and I we know appreciate that. you coming in tonight I know, I and talking that. with us. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. I'm talking with uh, Charlotte Golar ritchie about uh, what comes after the preliminary campaign and then 
almost coulda, woulda, shoulda been <laughs> moment. And uh, nice enough to come by tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, be focusing on the city council races. Until then, for the entire staff and crew here at BNN, I'm Joe Heisler. Thank you for watching. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. Thank mm -hmm. you.